You're welcome to our Thursday family service at noon on Thursday, 25th June. Today, we have special time with the Sunday school. Uncle Joseph has something special. You better take your seats and prepare. Until now, Noho and Brother Enam will read for us. And children, we have a surprise for you. Janine and Eliana are going to say a wonderful poem about the theme today. So come learn, come sing, come pray, and come walk with us. We begin our service today as we sing MHB 99, Methodist Hymn 99. How sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ears. It suits his sorrows and heals his wounds and drives away his fear.
We shall now have time with Sunday school. And Uncle Joseph is ready. So he's going to take us through time with Sunday school. Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to be sharing on the theme, uh, He Knows His Own. Our main verse is taken from Matthew 7, 21. There are a couple of other verses, but we'll focus on this one. So before we, we go ahead, let's just take a quick word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time. We pray that you will transform us with your words that are being spoken today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. So Matthew 7, we have Jesus start talking to his disciples, right? And he says something that is very interesting. He says that not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, who enter into the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of the Father. Now, I found this very interesting. Like, I mean, it's a little, I mean, be a little bit scary that Jesus said that you are saying Lord, Lord, and everything, but still, you will not enter the kingdom. And he makes, he gives us the key, which is unless we do the will of the Father. Now, I went to look at um, the word, the verses before and after, right? And, and just before he said this, he talked about people with different fruits, right? He said, he said by their fruits, we shall know them. And after that, he had this, um, his, this section, and then he goes to talk about the wise and the foolish builder. And the difference between them was one listened to the word and acted on it, and the other one did not, right? So in this whole little uh, segment of the scripture, Jesus is giving a message to us, which I think is very important for us as students, right? He's saying that it doesn't matter as much what we look like on the outside, but it matters more what we look like on the inside and what is in our heart. Okay, so that you could be that person, right? Everybody thinks that you are this really prim and proper person. Your parents, your mother, your father will say, oh, my son is never do that. My daughter, no, 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 he's just like this. But you know that in reality, it's not all like that. Because you know the things that you do on the internet sometimes or the conversations that you have with your friends, which are little shit, right? Then there's the other person. Who looks like they're doing absolutely everything correct, every time, anywhere, everywhere. Everybody knows them for the right thing. However, they are only doing it just because mommy said I should come to church or just because you look smart when you know all the stories and, and you can share and do and win the sword drill and everything, right? For these two people, Jesus has a message. It does not matter what it looks like on the outside. What really matters is what is going on in your heart, right? And nowadays, like, there's a lot of pressure on us as kids and uh, our teens because there's social media pressure, there's peer pressure. We need to look a certain way on Instagram. We need to look a certain way on TikTok or whatever other um, app may be out there, right? But we should not let these things determine who we are, right? Jesus is saying that our first and foremost thought should be, how do I please the Father? How do I do the will of the Father? So we need to all take a step back and look at what really is in your heart. What really is motivating you? Why are you doing what you are doing? What really is it inside you when there's nobody else around except you and our God? And I have a quick uh, verse that I think sums everything up. And then we can be a prayer that we can use, right? Psalm 143 verse 10 says, Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on level ground. And I think this really sums everything, right? In our quiet moments, we can come and pray this and say that, Lord, I don't want to live for other people anymore. I want to live for you. And I want my heart to be pure before you. So this is what I really wanted to share with us. And let's keep on being honest with ourselves and being honest with God. And let's not listen to what our the friends say if it's not in the will of God or what the world says because that doesn't matter. In the end, it's what Jesus or the will of the Father that matters. Amen. The scriptures will be read for us. I want you to pay attention and know what Jesus is saying about he knows his own. Are you one of his own from what is going to be read? The scripture readings. Our first scripture reading is taken from 2 Kings chapter 24 verses 8 to 17. 2 Kings chapter 24, verses 8 to 17. Let's hear the word. Jehoiachin was 18 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months. His mother's name was Nehushta, daughter of Elnathan. She was from Jerusalem. 
He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father had done. At that time, the officers of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, advanced on Jerusalem and laid siege to it. And Nebuchadnezzar himself came up to the city while his officers were besieging it. Jehoiachin, king of Judah, his mother, his attendants, his nobles and his officials all surrendered to him. In the eighth year of the reign of the king of Babylon, he took Jehoiachin prisoner. As the Lord had declared, Nebuchadnezzar removed the treasures from the temple of the Lord and from the royal palace and cut up the gold articles that Solomon, king of Israel, had made for the temple of the Lord. He carried all Jerusalem into exile, all the officers and fighting men, and all the skilled workers and artisans. A total of 10,000, only the poorest people of the land were left. Nebuchadnezzar took Jehoiachin captive to Babylon. He also took from Jerusalem to Babylon the king's mother, his wives, his officials, and the prominent people of the land. The king of Babylon also deported to Babylon the entire force of 7,000 fighting men, strong and fit for war, and a 1,000 skilled workers and artisans. He made Mataniah, Jehoiachin's uncle, king in his place, and changed his name to Zedekiah. Here ends the reading. Our second scripture reading is taken from the book of Matthew. Matthew 7, 21 to 29. Matthew 7, 21 to 29. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the wind blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. Here ends the second scripture reading. Janine and Eliana are going to say their poem. Listen attentively. Let's learn from them. The title of our poem is, He Knows His Own. He Knows His Own. Yes, so oh yes, He is known. Jesus Christ, His glory shown. Yes, indeed, He knows His own. He died on the cross to save us our sins. Our body, soul, and spirit reign. He knew us by name even before we were born. He created us with perfect care and adorn. Yes, indeed, He knows us well. We must share Christ's word and to everyone we must tell. Good afternoon again and welcome to our Thursday Midday Family Service. This afternoon, our theme is He Knows His Own. He Knows His Own. The scripture that was read for us from, this, from the gospel is one of the longest sermons Jesus preached. At the end of this sermon, he comes to a very wonderful portion where he gives an illustration. We have the conclusion of a long, excellent sermon, the scope of which shows the indispensable necessity of obedience to the commands. Jesus preaches very long, and at the end, he makes sure that we will obey these scriptures. It is designed as if, having made the whole box, he puts in the nail that finally fits it in place. And so the disciple who sat at his feet may never have heard him preach like that. And, and, and the, 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 not only the disciples, but even the church, even the, the, the Israelites, they sat at his feet and at the end you can see, he said that, look, this man taught with an authority, not like the scribes. So what is it that Jesus is teaching 
that is so important that they say he teaches us one with authority. We make Jesus see, uh, we, we see Jesus makes a very important uh, portion of his message. He's showing that our outward profession of religion and all the remarkable things we do for show are not always the things he's looking for. In Matthew 7, 21, no one who calls me their Lord will go into the kingdom of heaven. Only those who obey my word will go to heaven with, uh, to see my father. So Jesus is putting, putting emphasis not on the things we do, the showy, showy, nice things that we do, but instead what we will do in obedience to the word of God. For Jesus, obedience is much more important than all the showy things that we can do. On the day of judgment, many will call me their Lord. They will say, we preach in your name. And in your name we forced out demons and we worked many miracles. Jesus is saying that those are not the important things for him. You, but for us, yes, when we hear there is so and so prophet or so and so miracle worker or so and so person, we come to, 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 the, to, the, to the service hoping that he will call us, he will teach, he will talk to us and do something spectacular in our sight. But Jesus is saying that it is not the most important thing. I want you to obey the word of God. I want you to know the word and to obey it. But I tell you, I will have nothing to do with you. Get out of my sight, you evil people who only dwell on the showy and the classy and the flamboyant things. Christ laid down his life for us. Not, note, he says that not everyone who said, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. It is the ultimate the ultimate is heaven, not what we do here on earth with all the showy things. Jesus wants us to really follow her word, the word, the word, the word. You remember Joshua 1, 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you will be careful to do exactly according to it. Then you will be prosperous and your way will be blessed. That's what Jesus said. So Jesus prefers obedience to the many wonderful great fights, the great feats that we can do. Remember, when the people came to, 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 to heaven, uh, he, they, they were trying to show or uh, justify the things that they had done. We cast out demons. We did this, we did that, we did that. But Jesus considers them a hypocrite's plea. The hypocrite's plea is against the strictness of the law. They offer the things in lieu of obedience. In, in place of obedience, they want to show that, oh, we didn't obey you, but you see, we did these things for you. We didn't follow your word, but we did these greater things. Don't you remember, these are things that people really loved and they flocked and they put us in the front page and they gave us the biggest channels and, they, and we had the biggest following on the YouTube. But that's not what Jesus is interested in. He's interested in obedience to him. In the same way, in the Old Testament reading that was done for us, this young man is put on the throne as the king. And he did not do what God expected. He did what was not expected, just like his father. And so he suffered defeat. He was carried into exile. Jesus, is more, God is more interested in obedience to him. It carried on to the next person who was also put on the throne. So long as they did not obey Christ, so long as they did not follow him, so long as they did not do what he wanted, they were defeated. And the same thing in our lives. So long as we will not obey Christ, so long as we will not follow his word, we will not win with Christ. We can do all the plea and all the things that we can, we can show in argument that we, we, should be, we deserve an attention. But Jesus is not interested in that. Jesus is trying to complete the story. He says that, look, there the, the, may be faith of miracles, yes? They were, just, they, they were justifying the faith that they, have, that they have, yes? And we also do the same by doing the gift of tongues and the healing, which we recommend to the world. But it is real holiness or sanctification that is accepted to God. Grace and love are more excellent, uh, more excellent way than removing mountains 
or speaking in tongues of men and of angels. I say that again. Grace and love are a more excellent way than removing mountains or speaking with tongues of men or of angels. I'm not saying these are not important. That Jesus said, not that miracles are not important, but his preference, what we should focus on, is the thing that he wants us to do to obey him. Grace will bring a man to heaven without working miracles. But working miracles will never bring a man to heaven without grace. But Jesus exemplified this in the story that he gave with the, with, with the, with the two people. They all heard the gospel. They all heard the new news. They all heard the message. And they were supposed to build or do something with their lives. The world is full of shams. Counterfeit coins circulate. Paste jewels are worn. Let us take heed against a counterfeit religion. It betrays itself by one. It does not involve the denial of self. Our Lord compares this to entrance of a straight gate and narrow. It is a way of the cross. We must say no to the eye in ourselves and instead obey him, obey him. It also does not produce good fruit and then it rejects the righteousness of God. The result of which we can see in this short clip. Two people, they were supposed to build on the right uh, surface, but they did not. The wise man and the foolish man. your house on the rock. You, this rock is Jesus, the word of God. If you build your life on the word of God, you are getting to better places. Remember also that if you do not obey the word of God, you are like building on sand. The floods will come, the rains, the rains will come down, the floods will go up, and it will wash away your building, your house. You will not be granted a place in heaven because God will say, I do not know you because you did not obey my word. You see, in the Syrian summer, like some lands in, in Accra, when the soil is baked hard by the intense heat, any spot will serve equally well as that site of a house. No one can say whether his neighbor has built well or ill, only the builder knows. But in the winter and in the rainy season in Ghana, the rains fall in torrents. And the valleys are filled with foaming floods, which sap all the foundation that have not gripped the living rock. Let yours not be like that. Don't build in waterway. 
Don't build in a place where it will wash that way. Instead, build your life on the solid rock, which is Jesus. Obey him and let him know that you, 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 you love him and you are prepared to work by his grace and not by the showy, showy things. We are not saying that's not important, but we are saying that it is a better option. A better option. Grace will bring you to heaven. Miracles will, may not bring you to heaven without grace. The sense of these verses we have been talking about, Jesus saying you must obey and exemplify it by the parable, says that no person, by merely acknowledging the authority of Jesus, just believing the divinity of Jesus' nature, professing faith in the perfection of the righteousness and infinite merit of his atonement shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But what shall be? But he who doeth the will of the Father, he who gets the bad tree, who gets the bad tree rooted up, the good tree planted, and comes, continues to bring forth fruit of the glory and praise, and that fruit that will abide. So, we need to obey God and to do his will. How do we know? We know this because the word says that. Now, how do you also know that we are his and that we'll get to heaven? Jesus in John 10 says that my sheep know me and I know them. My sheep hear my voice and they, they know me. I'll show you a short clip where sheep know the voice of their master. They will not go after any other shepherd. You can have three different shepherds keep all their sheep in the same pen. When the first shepherd comes and he makes the noise or he calls the sheep, those who belong to him will come. In the same way, the number two and number three. Jesus speaks to us through his word. And he knows those who are obeying. And he can tell those who follow him when he calls. He knows those who are his own. So, listen to the word of God. Hear his voice. Obey it and live with it. Jesus, he knows his own. Amen. One more time. Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you for today. You have taken the time to show us that obedience yields better results. For the kings of Israel who did not obey you, even though they had a wonderful kingdom, they failed. And for the people you exemplified in your word, those who did not obey your word, 
And they did wonderful things and thought they did all of this in your name. They thought that they had conquered. They thought that they had done something superfluous and flamboyant. That was pin-up story. Lord, those are not the things you are interested in. You are interested in what we do in obedience to your word and in to your will. Cause us to accept and to understand. To obey your word yields more results. It brings something that's, that bears fruit and that fruit abides all the way to living with you in heaven. We don't want to be turned aside. We instead want to live. At this time, we also pray for all those who are reeling under the COVID, the ministers, the minister of health, minister of education, um, um, and the like. We pray for every one of them. And the doctors who are suffering because they've served, they are being in the front, they are doing your will, your work to serve mankind. And then they are suffering this. We pray in the name of Jesus that you will touch them and heal them. Do the same for our economy, for our, 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 our finances as a nation, so that the hospitals that are desirable to be built, you provide the funds. And any other things that must be done, we pray for our students who have gone to school, going to write their exams. Thank you for finances that have helped them so the government can pay, then they can stay. We pray, Lord, that as they learn, they will earn. All the accolades that are required in their, in, in, in their education, at the right time, you will bring them out. And because they obey the scriptures, they read and they follow, it will be said to them that, yes, you deserve this enjoyment of a heaven on earth by passing. So do this for us. We pray for ourselves. Anyone who has asked special prayers of us, we pray. And you meet the person and the people at the point of their need, according to your riches and glory, by Christ Jesus. Amen. Jesus knows my 
victory Cause your power is within me No giant can you beat me Our closing hymn is MHB 528. We are talking about heaven. In heavenly love abiding, no change my heart shall fear. And safe is such confiding, for nothing changes here. The storm may roar without me. That's around me. My heart may low be laid. May be going through some trials. But God is run about me. Can I be dismayed? Especially when you build your, 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 your life, your house, on a solid rock like Jesus. MHV 528.
Let's receive the benediction. To him who is able to present you to himself and to his father blameless because you will have obeyed the word. I commit to you. The Lord teach you, open your ears and cause you to follow. The Lord give you grace so that you can walk in these words morning, noon, night. And may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds even as you obey the word. In Jesus' name, amen.